Uh, I'm Paolo Pagliari. I'm an assistant professor. Uh, I'm a nutrient management specialist. I have a 40% research and a 6% extension. I don't have a formal teaching appointment, but I do attempt to teach farmers to be smarter in the way they farm, particularly in how they use nutrients in their farms. Uh, I have one student, a graduate student, that I co-advise with uh, Jeff Coulter in agronomy. Uh, and I supervise three tech personnel out at the research station where I'm housed. Uh, what drives me? Um, I have a lot of interest in learning more about how plants use nutrients um, and also trying to understand better what's the better way to feed plants. Should we be spoon feeding a plant or should we put all the nutrients up front as we do today? So what, how we, what is the best way to improve nutrient use efficiency in terms of how we feed the plant? Uh, my passion is to explore new research ideas, think of ideas that haven't been done before, and also to challenge the current knowledge. I think that the only way we can move forward is by challenging what we know and try to better understand what we don't know. Uh, some of the goals is transform agriculture, revolutionize waste management, uh, you will see why, and provide every living person with adequate nutrition, so nothing really too big. <laughs> Uh, some of the research I do to uh, better understand my goals and my interest is uh, looking at how nutrients in the soil interact with microbial organisms and how those two interact to provide plants with adequate nutrients. So, for example, in this study, we had a very large trial uh, where we looked at over, uh, I think it was 400 different treatments. Um, and then what we learn when we do those big studies is that there's a lot of data manipulation we can do when we have a large data set. For example, here, this is the raw data I used for this particular field, but then when we start playing with statistics and start doing, uh, removing spatial correlation um, and field variability, we can really narrow down to the specific treatments that we're interested in. In this case here, we completely changed how the yield looks, and we're primarily looking at the viewer effects of the treatments in the landscape. Uh, this is another study. This is a study that Benjamin is working on. Uh, we are using nitrogen as a fuel for microbial activity in the soil. So we're trying to understand what happens with the microbial community and the nutrient availability in the soil as you add the nutrients or nitrogen throughout the growing season. And in 2014, what we saw is there was a drier year, and if we split our nitrogen application throughout the growing season, we ended up being short in the end because there wasn't enough moisture throughout the season, so we were not able to provide the plants with adequate nutrition. And when we look at nitrogen use efficiency, uh, both in the plant or in the grain, we see about 6% use efficiency. However, in 2015, we had a much wetter season, and we're starting to see here blue line is the control, black line is the best treatment, and the red line is uh, the new treatment where we're splitting rates. We see that the uptake was much improved. We got over 80% nutrient use efficiency for nitrogen compared to 60% when we put it all front. So this starts to show that if we change how we're feeding the plants, we might increase the nutrient use efficiency quite significantly. Now, another study that I have, we are looking at fossils behavior in soil. Uh, and one of the things we're able to learn is that Phosphor does get tied up in the soil, but right after fertilizer starts to dissolve, it's not as simple as we think it is. It appears that regardless of where the soil comes from, which is from the United States, this year says Brazil, so it's a soil that was passed from Brazil, we see a lot of high nutrient availability soon after application. So if we start thinking about different ways to use fertilizer, we might be able to change um, how we're feeding the plant and the efficiency of those nutrients. Uh, why do I care? Right now we are at 7.3 billion people in the world. There's 19 births per thousand population, which by the time I'm done with this talk, there will be 600 new babies in the world. Uh, we extrapolate. A lot of people say different things, but if we use current data, we're going to be around 12 billion people by 2050. they got to keep running. Uh, our field, we got 200 billion metric cubic meters available. We use six billion metric cubes a year, and by 2050 we might run out if we don't find more. Phosphorus, we got 88 years according to 2002, then we got 50 to 100 in 2009, not 30 yet, and then we got 150 <laughs> by 2009, and then we got a little more in Morocco now. Oh my god, 
<laughs> no, we got a solution. We got to do a better job of the uh, waste management. Thank you all.